Self-storage is big business and helps create space in our overcrowded homes. I'm so scared what I'm going to find. <laughs> Don't worry. It's just crazy. But some have taken their storage hoarding a step too far. It's bigger than you, isn't it? <laughs> Clinging on to things they never see or use. There's a lot of memories in two boxes. And it's costing them a fortune. We've spent about £80,000 in total, which is just... I try not to think about that. I'm Maggie McKenzie, and I'm an expert in clearing junk and people's excess baggage. And my craft has made me what I am. <laughs> Yeah, a hoarder. That's a scary thing. I'll be asking hoarders to open the doors of their units... It's exciting. <laughs> ..empty out their stash and choose to either keep it, skip it or sell it. Our antiques expert will then pull out any hidden gems... Jimi Hendrix guitar made $2 million. Yes! ..to take to auction and make some hard cash. Oops. In today's show, one hoarder faces possible disaster. Things, valuable things, do get broken. And for the other, the thrills keep on coming. If I gave you $100,000 for it, I wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't be being generous. Honestly. OK. And coming. <laughs> Welcome to Storage Hoarders. I'm in Greenford to help two guys wrapped up in the romance of their hoard face reality and decide to keep, skip or sell their stash. First up are Richard and his niece Rebecca. He spent over £11,800 on his storage unit over eight and a half years, stashing away cultural memorabilia inherited from his family. So why has he hoarded their things for so long? They had some interesting lives, and so there are things attached to what they used to do in, in there, which I'm reluctant to just chuck out. Richard lives in Regent's Park, the cultural heart of London. He first moved to the capital as a young man back in the 40s when he was taken in by his cousins, a group of literary and cultured individuals. I'd lost my parents um, quite young, and so they, their home became mine. After his cousins passed away, Richard inherited their vast hoard of cultural memorabilia. He tried to cram their collection of books and possessions into every nook and cranny in his home, but when the space ran out, he had no choice but to resort to storage. You can see the problem with uh, storage. I mean, stuff stuck everywhere on top of cupboards, and these are all full of God knows what. Every piece of his collection tells a memorable family story. His cousin Gerard wrote books with illustrations of objects Richard now owns. I wanted to show you this picture where he's got his little table. Now, that little table is still down in the store. Cousin Gerard was also a publicity agent for 1930s actress and sex bomb Jessie Matthews, and he passed on this unique publicity material to Richard when he died. There were some, some artefacts of hers down there, you see, that, that I found in a box. I would like to find it a good home. With his niece Rebecca visiting from Canada, Richard's decided to seize the day and downsize his unit, passing on some precious pieces to the rest of his family. Knowing that I have a really hard time letting go of anything, yeah. how am I going to possibly be a help? <laughs> well, well, because if you say something's got to uh, go, then uh, uh, it, it's definitely got to go. You right, know, I shall so, take my role very yeah. seriously. <laughs> I think it's emotionally exhausting, and I think there are going to be a lot of papers and diaries, and I mean, by the end of it, you've got sort of rummaged through years and years and years and years, even if it's only in the space of hours. <laughs> Will Richard and Rebecca be prepared to part with possessions that are bound up in their family history and spring clean his unit? I've got a vague idea. You are not the storage hoarder, but you are. Is this right? Uh, I'm afraid I, I am, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you have that look about I've, you. I've got, of I've got the storage hoarder look. Look, yes, yes, look yes, about yes, you. Yes, yes. Rebecca's my niece, uh -huh. and I thought she'd be like, to, like to come along and see what still needs to be kept, because of the problem with keeping things like... I like the way you say, see what still needs to be kept, rather than see what can be let go of. Well, it's a subtle difference, but that's the way it's I tend to think. It's a massive difference, <laughs> let me tell you. And, um, what is in your storage unit? Well, there are books, there are photographs. Most of it belong to cousins of mine. I think once we get to the family things, that's where it's just a bit difficult mm. because you have to go with your heart a little bit. If you did make some money, is it, have you got a plan about what you might want to do with this money? Uh, well, buy my son a wig. 
OK, you would like to buy your son a wig. A wig. Next month he's being called to the bar and they have to... They have to... Um, sort of they, they, Yes. OK, well, um, why don't we go and have a look and okay. see what's what? Can I help Richard ring the changes and do less keeping and more letting go of possessions he doesn't need? Next up is head fund manager and storage hoarder Jason. He's spent a lifetime collecting antiques as a hobby, but it's proved an expensive one, costing him over £5,000 in storage fees across four years. So why is he a storage hoarder? I absolutely love antiques, and once I've bought them, um, I tend to store them. Jason lives in swanky South Kensington, London, and his own apartment has got plenty of flamboyance too. Jason's been bitten by the antique buying bug. I love bronzes. I've got three or four more in storage. I've actually got two desks. That, that's the funny thing. The other desk is in the storage unit. My passion is auction houses. And this is where he spends a lot of his time. And there's always plenty here to appeal to Jason's taste. That's the problem, you see. I come here to sell things. I'll end up buying things. The crocodile, yes, it does say, look, beware. I'm guarding this house. But these two items, I've got a certain je ne sais quoi, as we say in French. Look at these, these are lovely. These will look good in my Spanish villa. Or in his storage unit, the things that Jason can't fit into his home have ended up under lock and key, something his partner, Crystal, is less than thrilled about. I think he spent like 200 pounds a month, and I think it's ridiculous and too much, too expensive. So it's time to save now. But Jason is hoping that his spending will earn dividends. We'll be able to sell those items on. So it's not just about passion, but it's also about perhaps getting my money back and even making a profit. Can I encourage Jason to quit the collecting habit and sell his much-loved pieces for other people to enjoy? So, Jason, you have a storage unit here. Yeah, I'd love to go to auctions. And every time I go to auction, I tend to buy more stuff and then I tend to hoard it. It just grows and grows and grows. Somehow, all on its own, it just grows and Absolutely grows. Absolutely all on its own. Is there anything there that you are particularly emotionally attached to? There's a very nice gilded gold easel with a very, very nice book that goes on the top by Leonardo da Vinci. How much do you pay a month for your unit? Absolute phenomenal amount. It's nearly £200 now, and that's, that's a lot of money. That's over £2,000 a year. So mm. I think it would be emotionally a very good clear-out. Um, some of those lovely pieces will go to some very nice homes and where people can really enjoy it. Should we go and have a look at what you've got? I'm very excited about this. Me too. This. Let's go. Can I encourage Jason to quit the collecting habit and sell his much-loved pieces for other people to enjoy? We've met our storage hoarders in denial. It's now time to sort the treasure from the trash. Coming up, Ooh. our hoarders reveal some glitz. There's nothing plain in your life, is it? And glamour in their units. She was beautiful, wasn't she? Bring it up, bring it up. But will the bids sparkle at auction? Welcome back to Storage Hoarders. I'm helping two hoarders who, between them, have spent thousands of pounds storing belongings they haven't seen or used for years. Earlier, we met Richard, who's inherited a vast cache of movie and literary gems, including books written by his own cousin. That little table is still down in the store. And antiquaholic Jason, whose passion for buying anything old has got out of hand, which hasn't gone down well with partner Crystal. I think it's just west of money. Later, I'll be asking our antiques expert to help our couples pick out any unwanted treasures that could be sold to recoup some of the money they've spent. First to unveil his unit filled to the brim with possessions inherited from his family is Richard and his Canadian niece, Rebecca. <laughs> There's the table. There's the table. It's great. The famous table. Okay, I don't quite know what you're keeping this lamp for. <laughs> I did, I and didn't the, and the wheel, is. really? Despite first appearances, Richard's £11,880 bill over eight and a half years has been used to store precious family memorabilia and cultural gems. I'd forgotten about this. It was um, our aunt's uh, violin, which um, she was quite a violinist, I think, in her days. Mm. The violin was quite oh. old even oh. then. That violin looks like it could not only have value, but a great story attached to it. I'm hoping Richard's got a few history lessons to share with me. 
Now, this table this that looks like nothing, table. but it's not nothing to me. Aww. It appears in the frontispiece of one of the cousin's books. <laughs> oh, well, I... This is Mum's. What? This is Mum's. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, heavens, children's oh, encyclopedias, yes, yeah. which were a famous edition. Lovely. I love these kind of things. I used to spend hours and hours reading this. They must have been just wonderful they on a were. rainy day. They're, this they're is all the whole in there. It's the whole thing in oh, there. Oh, my yes. goodness. We've got a whole. Yeah, there are load two lots in there. I mean, they're part of one's child. I didn't really want to part with them. But, uh, yes, you but see this? look at the space they're taking up. Look, we have to be united in this. <laughs> You it's and not, I. It's not my stuff, though. It's not my stuff. No. You know what? I'm going to leave you to it mm -hmm. to dig through, yes. to get everything out, but yes. I will be back, OK? All right, so keep yes. on the good yes. work. Yes. Well right. done. I want to help Richard and Rebecca unearth some fascinating pieces and let go of things so entwined with Richard's past. It's now Jason's turn to come face to face with his unit that's cost him over £5,000 in four years. Wow, look at all this stuff. Absolutely lovely. Can't remember what I paid for that, but I think it was a pretty sum. Antique Mad Jason spent a small fortune buying pieces at auction he never gets to enjoy because he hasn't room for them at home. I want to help him see that less is more. How are you? All right, I can't believe some of the stuff. I haven't seen it for so long. It's unbelievable. I can't believe you're spending how much a month on this? Nearly £200 a month on that. You wouldn't believe it, would you? This is an antique Chinese um, tea set. Looks like Japanese lusterware. Really? Oh, you see? As if I know. Let's agree on it's probably oriental. Ooh, there's a <laughs> word. Something here that's ah. broken. Oh, no. Mm. Now, you see, the dangers of storage mm. is that things do get broken. Mm. I'm sure we can repair it, but of course, yes. you lose your original value. Yes. What we have here is a Chinese warrior. He would have had probably four or five different types of arrows, maybe coming up like that, behind him. And um, can you remember how much you paid for this one? Paid about £600 for this one at auction. Golly gosh. OK, we've got quite a lot of the stuff out now. Mm. I'm going to leave you... If you can just get everything else out, then we can sort it into piles okay. and take it from there. Great. OK? Thanks. See you soon. Jason's obviously been prepared to pay top dollar for his antique purchases in the hope of making a good investment. Perhaps I can help Jason recoup the money he spent. To help our hoarders clear their units, I want them to split their possessions into three categories. Keep it for those really sentimental pieces, skip it for anything old, or sell it for the items they think could be of value. I've also added a charity bin, so it's time to get decisive. Oops. <laughs> Another gun girl with rather large breasts. <laughs> They've got just three hours to get their stuff out and sort through it. Are you ever going to take that, do you think? Yeah, I can pack it up and take it. Jason's hoard may look sparse, but for him it's always been a case of expensive quality, not random quantity. Old toaster, just two, 200, 250 pounds. While Richard and Rebecca's neatly piled boxes hide a 20th century treasure trove of family history. Well, that was Derek's last diary. He'd written that for up to the day before he died. Aww. Richard has great loads of books here, but not just your common or garden variety. Many of his collection are first editions, in other words, the first print of a book. So who did all these books belong to? Well, they belonged to cousins of mine. It was the love of it, but on the other hand, there was also one eye on the fact that these might be quite valuable. And do you think there, there are any amongst these that would be valuable? Well, I think so, yes. I mean, Virginia Woolf, then, um, oh. Voy The Voyage Out, which I think is oh, golly. worth quite a lot of money. It's um, any first edition of Virginia Woolf. Well, it was bought at one point for seven and six That's pence. right, there you are. It's probably worth hundreds. This is Flowers from Shakespeare's Garden, and it's a 1906 edition, uncut. And the, the colour is absolutely beautiful. Happy to sell that? Well, mm. well unless Rebecca would like to have it. I, I mean, no, it's a, no, no, it's so it's, polite, isn't it? No, like first edition of uh, Oscar Wilde, De Profundis. Amazing. <gasps> Very excited about our experts seeing these. Yes. Because these books look so interesting, I've invited expert Paul Hayes, who spent all his life in the antiques business, to take a look. These are vellum, which is like a calf skin. They're very early, oh. this is the way they used to bind them, and then in oh, the really? front here... Oh, really? I see. Can you see that? It's very distinctive. Yeah, 
but in the frontier we have some Roman numerals. Have you dated this one? 1727. Yeah, yes, it's nearly, Isn't that incredible? Nearly 300 years old. Nearly 300 years old. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. And also you have Oscar Wilde. Okay, now Oscar Wilde, um, his first distance can bring hundreds of pounds if it can turn it on the condition, mm -hmm. uh, as can Virginia Woolf, but the condition is quite bad on these. Yes, yes. So what I would like to do is to put these into a specialist and to find somebody who does nothing but books. Richard's not convinced he wants to part with his books, so Paul's taking him and Rebecca along to meet antiquarian bookseller Adam Blakeney. With first editions being a vibrant market, maybe he'll make them a tempting offer. Are there any sleepers in here, any hidden gems? They're falling to bits because somebody threw them in a box. <laughs> no. No, no, I'm not, no. no. It, it, about 80 years ago, I think. Not, yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not looking at anyone. They were gent gently laid in a gently box. Gently laid in a box upside down. When it comes to value, a mint condition book will command the highest price. Richard's copies aren't in tip-top condition, so what's Adam's opinion on the Virginia Woolf? You see this, here and here. Uh -huh. It's where it's been against a wet wall like that, and uh -huh. it's come through onto here. Um, I mean, it's a book you can sell for as much as £2,000 if it's pristine. Uh, there is one known copy in Dust Jacket and one reported uh -huh. copy in Dust Jacket, and... Um, if I gave you $100,000 for it, I wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't be being generous. Honestly. Okay. And this is a, as a mark of what condition means. This book, it's a couple of hundred quid. Mm -hmm. wow. It's a shame about the condition, but still not a bad price for a book. And Oscar Wilde's De Profundis, also in poor condition, Adam values at £125. First edition books by famous authors sell really well. An original Charlie and the Chocolate Factory can be worth £5,000, but it would be especially worth your while having a UK hardback copy of Harry Potter. It could fetch you in excess of £20,000. Richard has a first edition copy of The House at Pooh Corner by A.A. A. Milne, which is also signed by the author himself. Surely this must be a valuable addition. I'll give you a retail figure because I think that's probably best. I think it's probably worth two and a half thousand pounds. <laughs> okay? It's not rocket science in the end. We all know Winnie the Pooh, we can sing the song, right? <laughs> so I would be a book I would make an offer on if, if you would well, like you've it. Pick, you've, picked, I mean, you've picked on the one book I didn't really want to sell. <laughs> but is this, an, is this a negotiating tactic or are we actually talking? <laughs> <laughs> it's not because it, it's, it's a lovely possession, I, you I know. Don't, and, I don't and, blame and, you. Uh, I don't blame you. <laughs> what I will do then before you go is I will just put some of our protective plastic around it just in yeah. case one day I get to buy it. No, I might one day get to buy it. <laughs> Sometimes memories are worth more than money. For now, Richard is going to keep his books and add them to his library. I'm delighted, to be honest, because uh, I now know what some of them are worth and, 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 in fact, quite pleasingly, some of them were worth more than I suspected. Back at the storage unit, Jason Small's cell pile seems to be shrinking further. I wonder what he'll do with his favourite easel. Look at that. Oh, my goodness me. There's yeah. nothing plain in your life, is there? No. Everything has got to be kind of gold or... Apart from the cardboard boxes. Yes. There, the I loved it because it's, uh, it's really gilded in gold. It's very ornate. And on here, I have got a very, very nice um, book. Should we open it on this? Um, How long have you had yeah. this book for? Well, I've had this book, must be about five years now. And it shows you all the prints and works of the, um, one of my great, great artists, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, who, as we all know, with his most famous painting, the Mona Lisa, anatomy works and how bones mm -hmm. move and He's function. He's an extraordinary mind, didn't he? I bought this at um, uh, an auction house, actually, in North London. Spent all your life in auction houses. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's quite heavy. Goodness. And there we go, you see? So you, you're going to put this and the book to auction? Yeah, mm. good question. I'm, I'm quite attached to this. Jason's got to get on and make some tough decisions if he's ever going to clear out his unit in time. Meanwhile, Richard and Rebecca's cell pile is rising along with their fortunes and the riches keep coming. That's quite a racy picture for 1903, know, isn't it? It is. There's a girl smoking and yes. sitting rather perched strange on perched on the bicycle. Yes. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> shall I or shan't I? Ah. That's fantastic. Richards also discovered some publicity material relating to film star Jesse Matthews. It was first assembled by his cousin Gerard, who was her agent. 
And they have some photographs Whoa. of her, her publicity photographs. No, she was a big, big star in the 1920s and 30s. She was a pin-up of her time. She was beautiful, wasn't she? Jared worked with her for years and we heard stories, but I've never seen these pictures. It's lovely. Was he very fond of her? I don't think in that sort of way, uh, if, you're, <laughs> if you're implying something. <laughs> Jessie Matthews was the sex symbol of her day, glamorous, starry, and often in trouble. Scandalous affairs with her leading men caused the rumour mill to work overtime with stories about her latest exploits. It must have been quite a job for cousin Gerard to protect her from the public's insatiable appetite for gossip, and this unique hoard of papers is the result. She actually had quite a sad life in the end for somebody who had seen the heights. So what? What are you going to do with the rest of this, then? Michael Thornton, um, the journalist, has written a biography of Jesse Matthews, and I'll probably mm -hmm. send this up to him. Mm. I'm sure her biographer will enjoy this generous windfall from Richard. With minutes to go, both hoarders have really made inroads, and I'm finally getting Jason to be decisive. I've had this for quite a while now. Right. I think what we Let's might do is move, move that across. Should we do that? Yeah, exactly. Let's not get confused. Oh, let move that across here. Yes. This is a lovely lamp. Too much modern for my liking. Is that right? I'm yes. sure somebody else can, yep. can use that. Yeah. That's it. We're done. Well, that's great. It uh, wasn't as bad as I thought it might be going to be. Time's up and they've both done an amazing job. While Richard's cell pile is a healthy half of his whole unit, Jason's keep pile is one of the smallest I've ever seen, and he's finished with a huge cell pile of interesting antiques. So, given that you really seem to like acquiring stuff, yeah. and today you're doing the opposite, you're kind of shedding it all. That's right. How does that feel? Actually, it probably feels like a lot of weight off my shoulders, in all honesty. Both our storage hoarders have significantly downsized their hoards. The next step is to find out if there's any value in the pieces they want to sell. Coming up, Richard's violin excites the experts. The original violins can fetch. But will it make sweet music 20, at auction? 30, 440. Welcome back to Storage Hoarders, where I've been helping two hoarders face their past. Goodness. There we go, you see? Sort through their stash. I love these kind of things. And decide whether to keep, skip, or sell their belongings and finally make some money. To help recoup some of their cash, I've asked antiques expert Paul Hayes to scour our storage hoarders' cell piles for treasures. First up are Richard and Rebecca. Will their family inheritance have any real value? So, Richard and Rebecca, I've got Paul here to look at all your items. One of my favourite has to be this postcard album. Do you know whether this was collected by any one particular member of the family? I don't think it was. Probably been bought at some stage. This dates right on the turn of the century, so these are really Art Nouveau. These ladies in particular are fantastic. You know, you've got these wonderful uh, pre raphaelite sort of, yes, sort of pictures are, here. Yes. And, and I love them. I'd like to put a value of 100 to 150 mm -hmm. on that album. Mm -hmm. uh, I suspect it will bring a bit more, but that gives it a real chance. A hundred to hundred and fifty pounds, that's brilliant. Two ecclesiastical pieces have also caught Paul's eye. Now, do you know where this, is, this has come from? I don't know the, the it, uh, provenance of that, no. Well, she's a pre-Raphaelite painting, it's probably come out of a church. And people love that, you could make a little feature out of that on its own, couldn't mm, you? You've got this yeah. wonderful hand-painted. And what I've decided to do is to put it with this one, because this is a painting on tin. Again, ecclesiastical, we have a saint here, so I'll, these two I'd like to put in maybe 70 to 100 pounds for the pair. I'm sure somebody would jump on those. 70 to 100 pounds, they've really piqued his interest. Let's see how they do at auction. And Paul's starry eyed about something else too. Uh, but something that's going to be out of this world has to be the moon landings. <laughs> <laughs> now then, people say they remember where they were. Remember where you were? I was having a drink in a club, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you know what I love? That this is where the market is at the moment. I mean, it's an up and coming market, it's space memorabilia. And look at that, you've got uh, man's step on the moon. Isn't that wonderful? The Sears fan quality at 4 a.m. So that's the Monday, the July the 21st, 1969. Paul's found plenty to take to auction. He's making the cigarette card album and postcards one lot, estimated at 100 to 150 pounds. The stained glass window and painting at 100 pounds. And the moon landing cutting 20 to 40 pounds. 
also coming to auction are a pair of cup and saucers estimated at 30 to 50 pounds. But finally, Paul's attention has hit upon a very unique piece, the old violin, which Richard isn't yet sure about selling. Tell us about the violin there, Richard. Uh, well, the violin belonged to an aunt of mine. It's Joseph Granarius. Granarius, now, that's he, right. He was he? like uh, Stradivarius' brother. Some of the world's most famous violinists prefer the Granary violin to the more famous Stradivarius. His original violins can fetch hundreds of thousands oh, of yes, pounds. Yes. In the 19th century, 100 years afterwards, yeah. they reinvented them and yeah, reproduced yes. them. I have seen the genuine item. Ah. <laughs> it, it, it can look very, very similar. Violins of this ilk can be notorious for forgeries. Paul wants Richard and Rebecca to find out if this is the true article and is sending them to meet Sean Bishop, the maestro on violin authentication as well as a former player with the London Philharmonic. Sean, I'd be very grateful if you could uh, have a look at it and tell me perhaps a little more about it. Shall I have a little play? Please. Well, I'll try and get a sound out of this if I can. <laughs> To find out the true pedigree of a violin, the best thing to do is play it. This is in very good condition. Mm -hmm. So maybe it has been in the case for a long time. Yeah, I think it you has. Didn't, you didn't do much practice ever. yourself? Uh, unfortunately not. <laughs> Violins and string instruments are highly valuable and collectible. Just last year, a famous Stradivari violin sold at auction for £9.8 million. So does Sean know what Richard has his hands on? In the violin world, we've got Stradivari, mm -hmm. which everyone knows of, and we have Del Gesù, Guarneri. Mm -hmm. um, we have the Rolls-Royce, we have the Ferrari. <laughs> Del Gesù is a Ferrari. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, this is not a Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> so this is basically what we have here, is a copy. Yes. How can Sean tell if it's a copy or an original? Everything about the violin just says to me, you know, German factory violin. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> right, yeah. You know, it's just everything has been rushed very fast. Uh -huh. um, then they artificially age it, so they put little marks on it to make it look older. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to reach four figures. No, oh, no. Okay. I didn't expect that. Richard, what do you think the violin's worth? Somebody mentioned the other day that it might be worth about 150 to 200. I thought perhaps it might be a little bit more than that. Yeah, huh? I'd say mm -hmm. it's, it's a little bit more, maybe... Mm -hmm. 500. Mm -hmm. It's an antique, effectively. Mm -hmm. You're paying for the antique value. You're not yes. paying for the violin. No. So we've got violins being made in China today that cost 50 pounds. Yes. That is technically better yes. than this. Yes. But this has some age. People do like age in a violin. Yes. You know, for whatever reason, that's the way it is. It's a nice violin. So, yes. Sean, well, thank you so much for looking at that. You're welcome, very, very, I'm very grateful. It's very, Good luck. very interesting to hear about it and what it is and what it's not. Absolutely. <laughs> So Richard now knows he can get as much as £500. Is he going to add a string to his bow and sell it at auction, along with his other items? Having heard Sean play it, it's made me feel very tempted to take lessons myself and, uh, and it's never too late to start. We'll see, I don't know. I, I'm not convinced yet that I should sell it. At £800, all done, and selling at £800, well, we'll soon find out because I'm here at Chiswick Auctions to meet Richard and Rebecca. So, no second thoughts about any items put in? I think he's a little bit disappointed the postcards and oh, the well, yes, of cigarette yes. cards yeah. might go. It's the fact that it's been in our family for so many, so many years. It's Rich family in family attack, history, family isn't it? That's right. Yes. And Good sort of emotional, actually, yes, the whole... Yes, you kind is. of get churned over. Richard has decided to put the violin up for auction, but I wonder if he's ready to let go. So how do you feel about the violin possibly being sold? Well, uh, misgivings in a way. I'm almost tempted to take up lessons myself. Yeah, I just think it should be played and enjoyed. And if it doesn't do well, then I'd love to hear Richard play one day. Probably won't reach the reserve, but we'll see. Mm. We'll see. We'll see. The sale's about to start, but we just have time to find out what today's auctioneer, Matthew Caddick, makes of Richard's lots. So Richard has presented us with a, you know, an interesting mix of, of items. You don't often see a good 19th century violin in that sort of condition, and I'm pretty sure that we're going to have a lot of interest in it today. 
Um, postcard nudes in particular, certainly the risque ones, tend to attract a little bit of quirky interest in the room. Presenting uh, the stained glass panel along with the tin painting, um, it makes an interesting lot. One would hope that we were going to see a result on that today, um, and it would be nice that he gets a big result. Let's hope it's win-win for Richard. All of a sudden it feels very real, doesn't it? Yes, it does indeed, yes, yes. I mean, we may be in for a huge surprise. Well, you're right, because it is an auction after yes, all. Yes, a huge disappointment. Good luck with it all. Well, thank you. First up is the Risque postcard and cigarette album that Rich is reluctant to say goodbye to. Estimated by antiques expert Paul at £100 to £150. I'm starting me at £230, I'll take £240 in the room. £240 there, £250, £260, £280. Your bid at £280 beats the commission. £280, I think we're all done, aren't we, at £280 of selling? It's extraordinary. I think it's a risque bid. I think it was. Definitely nude art. We're off to a good start. Who knows what will happen with the violin? £280 is a great result, so they're on their way. And I'm sure Richard's happy someone else will enjoy them. Next up, it's his newspaper cutting about the first moon landing. Paul estimated it at £20 to £40, but will it skyrocket in the auction? An original newspaper from uh, July 1969, Neil Armstrong. Start me £20 for it. Interesting item, £20 for it. £10 for it. £10 is bid and 12 I'll take now. £10, why not take 12 12 there, 15 18 The gents bid at £18. All done. Bit of history, £18. You okay pounds, with that? £18. Pounds. 18. Well, yes, yes. As it only costs threepence. <laughs> £18, just under the estimate, but Richard's not complaining. Next up is Richard's treasured antique violin, which he's put a reserve on of £400. And I'll take £320 in the room. £320 there, £340, £360, £380. Still below reserve at £380. £400 there. Thank you. £400, take £420. At £400, take £420. Thinking about it, at £420, he's come back in at £420. I think he's got it. Are we all done then? Very last chance. 440. Your bid, sir, 440. Amazed. It would have gone back on top of the wardrobe. <laughs> Don't you think you'd have had your lesson? I might have had one or two. 440 pounds just over the reserve, a resoundingly good sale. And he's raking it in. The pair of cup and saucers, estimated at 30 to 50 pounds, went at 60 pounds. So, how will the last lot do? It's time for the ecclesiastical pieces that Paul found intriguing and estimated at 70 to 100 pounds. Two bids here with me, and I'm starting me right at the top of the estimate at 200 pounds, 260, 270, 280, 290, 310, 320, 330, 340 is my last 350, 60 there, 370, 380, 420, 430, 440, 450. We're all done, aren't we, at 440? It's amazing. I didn't think it was worth anything. You should empty out storage units more often. Oh, my goodness. £440. What an astonishing result. Over four times the estimate. Richard and Rebecca must be delighted with his takings. Happy with your result, are Yes, you? very happy with the result. Yes, yes, it's been uh, yes. a benefit in many ways. I thought it was fantastic. I mean, I, I think actually £18 for an old newspaper is quite good. <laughs> yes, yes, quite. <laughs> but most of all, I think I'm just relieved that the violin went. No one has to listen to the lessons which you promised. No, no, <gasps> no one's going to have to listen to me practising The rudeness now. of the niece. I know. After commission, Richard has made an incredibly healthy grand total of £1,138.96 at auction. And once he redistributes the remaining items to the rest of his family, he can empty his unit for good, making a yearly storage saving of £1,716. So, Richard, can you just remind us what you're going to do with all that money? Well, I think I said to you before that I was going to <laughs> buy my son a wig. His barrister's for, for, Yes, to, to, because he's going to be called to the bar. Okay. But the other thing I was going to do was to perhaps help Rebecca with the fair over. So now I can do both. Oh, <laughs> lovely. Yes, I couldn't have done it without her. Oh. So, Rebecca, are you taking any of it back to Canada with you? Yes, I'm very, very lucky. When we were in the storage unit, we unearthed a variety of letters and just small mementos, and I'm going to take them back. So, good result. You're going to be downsizing your unit. You made loads of money here, <laughs> and you've got some lovely mementos to take home with you. 
So I'd say that's a really good outcome, wouldn't you? I think we've both thoroughly enjoyed it, I have to tell you. I mean, it's been great fun. We've all, Thank you. We've all gained from it. I mean, not just financially, but also in experience. Yes. It's, been, it's been very interesting for us. Richard's enjoyed the time delving into fascinating stories behind his family life and passing on this inheritance for others to enjoy. Coming up, things don't go according to plan for Jason. The surface can't be saved. Oh, really? Rig it up, rig it up. But will they pick up at auction? Terrible. What's wrong Nothing. with everyone? No one's got any taste. Hello and welcome back to Storage Hoarders, where I've been helping two hoarders decide whether to keep, skip or sell the contents of their unit. Oops. Culture vulture Richard and his niece Rebecca rediscovered a scandalous starlet in their family past. She was beautiful, wasn't she? And made a healthy sum at auction of well over a thousand pounds. Now is the turn of antique lover Jason, who spent over five thousand pounds buying fine things at auction houses. I paid about six hundred pounds for this one. Golly gosh! He's about to find out if it's been a gain or a drain on his pocket. Paul Hayes, seasoned antiques expert, is a man who can spot a good antique. Will he find anything of value among Jason's auction buys? Well, I must say, Jason, you've got great taste. I mean, these are all very visual, very smart-looking items. I love the bronze. May I have a quick look at the bronze? Yes, of course. Uh, this is oh, uh, it's quite heavy. A style Actually, called yeah. neoclassical. This is where a rediscovery of the classics, very, very popular. Uh, this one obviously is a, a modern version of an yes. original bronze. Uh, I've got quite a few bronzes, um, so I think uh, this is one of them I'd like to definitely put into, in, into the auction, simply because uh, I think you can only have so many bronzes in the house before you end up looking like a sort of a, a auction house or something like that. Hopefully, if two people want it on the day, price will shoot up. Exactly, yes. If, if we were selling it around Valentine's Day, we'd be on it, because it is <laughs> the winged messenger of love. Paul's excited about the figure and thinks it could reach 180 to 200 pounds. Now Jason wants his assessment of the easel without the book. Do you have your paintings on an easel at home, Aggie? Do you have yours? All actually? of them, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite nice. What made you buy an easel? You don't mind well, basically, I, I think when I went into the auction house, I saw this right at the corner of the room and it really caught my eye. You cannot find an easel like this, especially painted in gold. It's quite rare. I should imagine. Sort of 70 to 100 for that one, would that be about what you would Oh, no, I think the easel was probably around £250. Probably put a 150 reserve just to make sure, just to get some interest in. And if we can get the interest, hopefully we'll get a couple of buyers on the day. Well, it's great optimism, but as long as you understand if it doesn't fetch that price, then you will end up with, with it coming back. Well, that yes, be and I'd be very happy that. if it came back. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so we'll say 150 reserved on that Absolutely. one. Absolutely. Jason's considering a high reserve of £150, but it might not be entirely realistic. He also has high hopes for his walnut chest, but what does Paul think? It's got a serpentine front, like a snake's back. Mm. Uh, it's ormolu mounted, and it, it's a great space saver. Whether you live in a bed sit yes, or live in a mansion, is, it? it's a usable yeah. item, isn't it? I think we paid about uh, two two hundred and fifty pounds for this item. So, if I can get my money back, I'll be happy with that. Well, I, th I think to be realistic, mm. what I would like to see with that is sort of one hundred and twenty, one hundred and fifty, and I think if to get two people who like it, it's yeah, great. absolutely. A realistic 120 to 150 pounds isn't quite what Jason wanted to hear, but Paul has found plenty else to take to auction, including the Mercury figure estimated at 180 to 200 pounds, the Victorian easel at 70 to 100, a walnut chest 120 to 150 pounds. He's also picked out a leather top filing cabinet 50 to 100 pounds and a walnut bedside cabinet, two to 300 pounds. Lastly, Paul's interest has also alighted on a side table. It's a, a lovely example. It's a, a Louis XV. Now, did, did you know about Louis XV? Pretty much. I think I, I try to find anything in the style of Louis XV. Yeah. Very, very ornate, very gilded, lovely lions in here, cabrio legs, absolutely beautiful. Love it. There we are. You've got a real passion for it, haven't you? <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, but it is a very nice style. Paul would like Jason to take this to auction, but he's concerned about the damage, so he's sending him to meet furniture restorer Martin McGilloway to see if restoring the table could add value. So, Martin, um, unfortunately, one late night, I probably sat down at this desk with a cup of coffee or something. Obviously, in the morning, I've realised I've left these terrible sort of watermarks here. It's quite a big mm. coffee mug. <laughs>
There are plenty of home remedies for watermarks, such as using metal polish. However, it's not always reliable. Your best bet is to get professional advice from a restorer. Almost anything can be restored. Tabletops can be remade, resprayed, or rewaxed. However, antique items can actually lose value with a restoration, as it can take away their originality. But Jason's decided to take the plunge. So how can it be restored to its former glory? Looking at it now, mm. this, the surface can't be saved. Oh, really? No. Obviously, there's quite a nice design underneath here, of the mm. wood and so forth. Will that be retained as we go forward, or will, that, will we lose that? That's just a tint oh, they right, put okay. in, the, in the lacquer, which, you know, when we strip this, it'll go quite yeah. natural. Then we have to reintroduce that Good. To, to, to bring it back to where well, it is. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, it's yeah. going gonna, it's gonna to look as it would have done when you first bought it. So how much would Jason need to spend on restoring the table? Yeah. Probably like a hundred, hundred and fifty, something right, like that. And if right. you get three hundred, three fifty, then yes. you know, you, it, mm. then it's worth putting in. But yeah. hopefully, when it goes in the auction room, there'll be a queue. We hope. Fantastic. Yeah. Good news for Jason. He could make a profit of two hundred and fifty pounds if the table is restored and sold. So I'm really, really excited about what Martin's going to do with the table. I hope he can restore it to its former glory. I'm excited because it actually may be even more beautiful than it was before, and that way I might decide to keep it, not put it in auction. It's auction time again, and Jason's decided to keep the table for himself as he likes it so much. But he still has high hopes for his other lots today. As a seasoned auction goer, I want to know what Jason's strategy is. Do you have reserve prices on everything? I do. I, the lowest reserve been on the filing cabinet, but the highest reserve been on the bronze. Are you feeling optimistic? We want to get interest, and hopefully then, if we get two bidders against each other, shoot the price up. Well, Jason, best of luck. 240 there, 250, 260. Before the items go under the hammer, what does today's auctioneer make of Jason's lots, starting with the easel? People who have not seen the scale of production of these things kind of wow in, in amazement when they see them, but the truth is we see them a lot, we handle them a lot, and I think the price might, might just perhaps be a bit punchy for an auction today. Furniture is touch and go. You may just have two people falling in love with one or two of the bits of the pieces of furniture. I think if I was going to gamble, I'd say the bronze is a pretty safe bet. This is figure is a good quality finish, it's a good size and it's a good subject. I expect that to do two, three hundred pounds quite comfortably. The auctioneer isn't impressed by the first lot, the easel, but Jason's convinced a high-risk strategy will pay off. He's putting a reserve of £150 on an item estimated at 70 to 100 display easel with card decoration, number 4858. Okay, that's beautiful. I want to buy that myself. Keep your hands down. £100 start me. No bids of £100. I'm going to pass the lot then at £100. And they can ask the owner on the £90 bid at £100. No further bidding. Terrible. What's wrong with everyone? No one's got any taste. Well. Beautiful easel like that in the corner of the room. Not even close to his reserve, oh dear. I think Jason's overstretched himself on this one. So, will he do better with his Regency filing cabinet, estimated by Paul at £50 and with the same reserve on it? At £50, start me. 50's bid, 55. Good. Behind you, 60. 65 pounds. Oh, that's such good money. Pounds. Anyone else then? At 65 pounds. Are we all done and selling at 65 pounds and out? That's a big item out of your way, isn't it? That's a big item out of the storage unit, yeah. so I'm happy with that. Um, it's very nice condition, so I'm a bit disappointed. That they could go for 120, 130 on a good day. It's sold for 65 pounds. I'm glad Jason won't be taking that bulky item home with him. Unfortunately, the walnut chest and the walnut cabinet also fail to hit the reserves, so the stakes are mounting for his final lot. Paul estimated his bronze mercury figure at 180 to 200 pounds. Yet again, Jason's up the ante, placing a reserve of 250 pounds. Will this high reserve strategy work this time? 20th century bronze figure, this one of mercury. Telephone bid connected. Telephone bid connected. I'm bid already at 200 pounds. I'll take 210 in the room. At 200 pounds, take 210 now. At 200 pounds, take 210. 210, 220, 230. 240, 250. God, it could be original. I've made a big mistake. 240. Are we all done at 240 pounds? All done at selling 240. 250, thank you. Thanks. At 250 pounds. 
Great. So I'm happy with that. It'll go to a deserving home. Good. And not yours. And not mine. <laughs> £250. Good call, Jason. The plan has finally paid off. Good result. Absolutely. I, th I think given the audience we had today, I think it's a really, really good result. Very pleased mm -hmm. that there was some interest mm -hmm. in, my, um, in, in my lot. Jason's luck has won the day. After commission, he's made £289.80 at auction. He sold his easel and cabinet at another auction for £260 and he's downsized his unit with a yearly storage saving of £804, making a grand total of £1,353.80, a figure not to be sniffed at. So have you earmarked the money for anything? Good question. I'm probably going to put it in my reinvestment fund. So next time I go to an auction, I have a little uh. bit of money there to buy something else, but not in storage. This time it's going to go in pride of place in my home. Good. You're going to use it. Absolutely. Excellent. I'm glad Jason can now put his feet up and indulge his passion for antiques, but I'm hoping that will only be from the comfort of his own sofa. Our storage hoarders have stripped down and streamlined their units and made a bit of cash along the way. Don't forget to join me, Aggie McKenzie, next time on Storage Hoarders.